All right, that was John Mills's Fragments of Your Imagination. Uh, and those are our students in the UT Jazz Orchestra. I uh, hope you enjoyed that one. Thanks for your great questions. We had a lot of them come in, and we'll be getting to them in Interplay. Keep those coming. Uh, now I'm here with Brian Kennard, who's one of those great students in the UT Jazz Orchestra. He's a master's degree student in jazz composition, and he's a jazz flutist, uh, which is an interesting uh, twist on things. And he's a great writer. And you saw him a lot in that last piece, actually, playing yes. both flute and piccolo. So welcome to Brian. Thanks for being Thank here you. today. Yeah. We're going to be talking about a piece of his called Sky Island. Uh, but before we talk about that piece in particular, let me ask you about what attracted you to jazz and how does playing the flute, which is a relatively unusual jazz instrument, affect your career or right. life? Yeah, so, um, so I was probably first exposed to jazz uh, as, a, as a younger person. <laughs> I, like Dr. Mills, I had a kind of a diverse background, uh, brought up listening to a lot of music, but I probably first realized the potential of flute and jazz when I was taken to a Tito Puente Orchestra concert by my dad in uh, high school, and uh, the great jazz flutist Dave Valentine was playing with them, and so I got to see what uh, what was possible on uh, on flute and see that flute in jazz was possible. So I didn't really start to appreciate it more though until studying it in undergrad and then I started composing and um, eventually I realized that uh, as, a, as a flutist in jazz I really needed to kind of create my own scene and create my own opportunities because I wasn't going to get called for too many people's jazz orchestra concerts or, or combo concerts. So I started writing my own music and uh, finding ways to in get myself uh, incorporated into, uh, into local jazz scenes. Uh, so when you started writing music when you were an undergraduate? Uh, um, like writing jazz? Uh, yeah, yeah, I started writing jazz when I was un in undergrad and uh, um, and I have a, did a few arrangements and such at that time, and um, and then I started writing more when I uh, did my degree before this, and mm -hmm. um, and now I'm here and writing a lot more. <laughs> right. Well, that, yeah, that's great. That's great. So the flute's been a, a really interesting voice, really, with the, the jazz orchestra. We've had the opportunity to have that as an additional voice. So mm -hmm. you're sometimes part of the saxophone section, sometimes not, sometimes double with other things, right? right and you combine right. with lots of different instruments. Yeah, yeah and yeah. that's that's kind of one of the, the things that is fun to figure out how, how I can uh, kind of put myself into the texture of the jazz orchestra and and make it sound like uh, an actual member of the, the band rather than just an additional instrument. Right, yeah, so. very cool. So tell us the story behind Sky Island, the piece that we're going to be listening to. Sure. So Sky Island uh, was kind of inspired by several trips that I took out west through New Mexico and Arizona. Um, and along the drive, there are these isolated mountains that aren't really part of another mountain range. And they're, uh, they have dramatically different uh, environments on the mountain versus uh, the, the lowland environment. So like a forest mountain versus a, a desert landscape. Um, and so this is kind of a piece inspired by viewing these mountains at a distance, but also understanding the kind of harsh climates that are uh, uh, on the mountain and around the mountain. Yeah, so. very cool. Uh, so at the beginning of Sky Island, you're playing uh, by yourself. And so can you talk about the instrument that you're playing and also about that music, whether that music is pre-composed or improvised? Sure. Yeah. So at the beginning of Sky Island, I decided it would be nice to have uh, one instrument which kind of symbolizes the isolated mountain uh, in some ways, and that instrument uh, is one of my, my favorite doubles, uh, a, a bass flute. So it's uh, an octave lower than the standard concert flute that we see in orchestras and in bands. Um, and so I improvised a, a, a solo at the beginning of the piece, and, and that was kind of, kind of what got everything started. 
Right, good. And we call that a cadenza, actually. Right. So that, that section that's kind of out of time, not in a, uh, not adhering necessarily to a form or a chord progression, but just freely played, right? And so you're playing that on the bass flute, which is, right. again, a very cool instrument. And you have a few effects on there, too, I think, right? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I believe we had some uh, some reverberation. And things and, and, like that, yeah. right, that kind of give it an interesting sound, right? Yeah. So uh, what are some other things that we should be listening for uh, while we listen to and watch Sky Island? And can you tell us who else is improvising during the song? Uh, and kind of contrast sure. those improvisation sections with the pre-composed sections real quickly. Yeah, Thanks. sure. Yeah. So, uh, of course, be it begins with the bass flute cadenza, and then uh, right after that, there's a piano ostinato, and that's a recurring theme. So that uh, happens in the beginning, and it comes back in the middle, and uh, it comes back again at the end. So that's one thing to listen for. Um, uh, another thing to kind of... Uh, identify as the kind of chamber music sounding beginning with uh, the horns, uh, no percussion. It's just uh, just the the wind instruments in a very kind of light textured sort of uh, sound, and then listen for the new groove that is established and the uh, the melody that gets played by the lower instruments, bass, flute, tenor saxes, I believe trombone as well. Um, and then from there, uh, we go through several groove changes. I take a flute solo, uh, improvised an, an improvised flute solo, and then shortly after I solo, the uh, um, uh, soprano saxophone, uh, Matt Maldonado, he plays uh, an improvised solo with a little bit of a groove change. And then immediately after Matt plays, uh, we have Ben Zeff on guitar playing a, a guitar solo. And then after the guitar solo, or well, during the end of the guitar solo, solo rather, the uh, ensemble comes back in playing the melody that we heard uh, toward the beginning okay, and right. on the way out. Right, okay, cool. Thanks for that uh, summary, really great summary there. Sure. So uh, now we're going to be listening to Sky Island in just a moment. There'll be an Instapolar 2 during Sky Island. And then after we come back from Sky Island, we'll be with Thomas Wanglinski, who's a freshman majoring in jazz composition. So we hope you enjoy the UT Jazz Orchestra playing Brian Kennard's Sky Island. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 